Hey everyone, it's Ali, and welcome to my channel. And today I am so excited to talk to you guys about some of my favorite books from when I was a kid. All right, you guys, so we are in March, and I thought that in honor of middle grade March, where some people choose to read a lot of middle grade books throughout the month, I thought that I would just kind of share with you some of the favorite books that I had when I was a kid. And honestly, I still love all of these books. I'm not going to participate in middle grade March as in reading only middle grade books this month, but I definitely do want to reread all of these throughout this year. So I was inspired, of course, just by the theme of the month in the book community, but also because my mom has been cleaning out her house a little bit, and she told me, you know, come on over and get some of these books from when you were younger if you want them. So not only am I sharing with you the books that I loved when I read, but I'm like actually sharing the literal books that I read over and over and over again when I was a kid. And of course, a lot of these were written like in the early 2000s. I think a lot of them were probably written between like 95 and maybe 2005. But I do think that all of these stories are super timeless and I would recommend to you if you are a parent who has kids, maybe in that like middle school, junior high age, and you're worried about them reading things with explicit content, things like that, I can definitely assure you that my mom approved all these books for me and she was very aware of what I was reading and watching. But before we get started, do let me know, are you participating in middle grade March? Maybe I'll do it next year, but I've just really discovered over the last year or so that I don't love having TBRs for myself. I do have a general idea at the beginning of every month what I want to read, but I'm such a mood reader that something that I might think I want to read at the beginning of the month, I change my mind halfway through and then I feel a lot of guilt that I'm not reading what I told you guys I'm gonna read. And because these books are such absolute favorites of mine, I do want to pick them up when I'm really in the mood for them. But all right, up first we have The Thief Lord by Cornelia Funk. Absolutely love this book, love this author, and you're gonna see a theme of that throughout this book haul. I'm actually not going to be sharing a whole lot of different authors because kind of what I did when I was younger is I would just find an author that I really, really liked and then I would read everything by them. And I don't have all of the books from these different authors that I did read when I was younger, but I will talk about them. I'll put the images up on the screen just so you can kind of visualize what I'm talking about. But this is a beautifully written story as far as I remember, and it's set in the magical underworld of Venice, Italy. After escaping from their cruel aunt and uncle, orphans Prosper and Beau meet a mysterious boy who calls himself the Thief Lord. The setting is absolutely beautiful in this story, and they did make it a movie, and I don't think the movie did very well. I'm not even sure if it was released in theater but it was really good and I need to honestly find it again and watch it. Maybe I'll do a video in the future where I read a story and then watch the movie, but I do remember that I really did like the movie and this was 100% one of my favorite books. Another series that I am guessing that you've heard of by Cornelia Funk is the Inkheart series and I think there are three books in the series and they were just so good, absolutely so good. As I said, the author writes beautifully, and I think any book lover would like the series because it's all about books and the magical worlds within books. And once again, they actually did make Inkheart into a movie, and they kind of did the thing that they did with the series of unfortunate events, where they took like all three books and they took random parts and kind of like made a different story. And I think the movie was good, but it wasn't really super true to the stories. And I think the movie also tried to make the story a little bit more lighthearted when there was actually a lot of like dark evil stuff going on, but so, so good. One of my favorite series of all time. Cornelia Funk, it looks like, has written a lot of different things. I know I did read Egrain the Brave. She also wrote a book called Ghost Hunters and the Totally Moldy Baroness that I enjoyed. So she did kind of write all over the place. It's not like now where I feel like authors really have to pick a specific lane and stay in it. 
So she kind of dabbled in fantasy and like a lot of different other genres. This is one that maybe you guys, if you're around my age, maybe you had to read it in school. I think that might be how I was first introduced to it, but this is because of Winn-Dixie. It's by Kate DiCamillo, I'm guessing is how you say her name. And this is like for the girlies who will eventually grow up to love literary fiction. I forget a lot of this story to be honest, but yeah, I do remember that there's a great little dog side character and I think there is a lot of personal growth and like working through different issues. So if you like those kind of books as an adult and you missed this one when you were a kid, I would recommend it and it is a pretty short book. And I didn't even realize it until now, but this was actually the author's first book. Some other books that I've read from the author that you might have heard of are The Tale of Despero, the Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane is so cute. I need to reread all of these. The Tiger Rising. And then there are more that she has come out with in recent years that have just not been on my radar as I've not been reading a lot of middle grade books. Okay, another one of my absolute favorites. I mean, all of these are absolute favorites. I'm just repeating the same thing over and over again. But if I could recommend one author for your 11, 12 year old girl, it would be Gail Carson Levine. Just hit after hit after hit. This chick can write a good story. So first we have The Two Princesses of Bemare. This one I don't remember reading as much. I genuinely forget a lot of this story. Oh, okay, yeah, this one is super good. It says, brave and adventurous, Princess Meryl dreams of fighting dragons and protecting the kingdom of Bemare. Shy and fearful, Princess Addie is content to stay within the safety of the castle walls. The one thing that the sisters share is their unwavering love for each other. The tables are turned, however, when the Grey Death leaves Meryl fatally ill. To save her sister, meek Princess Addie must find the courage to set out on a dangerous quest filled with dragons, unknown magic, and death itself. Time is running out and the sisters' lives in the future of the Kingdom of Bemare hang in the balance. Okay, so yeah, this is not one I remember reading as much as another one that I'm gonna talk about in a second, but this story is super good. And I remember I really related because like it says the sister meek princess Addie has to find the courage. I still am, but was much worse when I was a kid. I was so shy and just, I'm a naturally like kind of fearful person, which is annoying, but I really related with this character and kind of overcoming fears to do what you have to do to save your sister, to save the kingdom. So I think that this is a great story if you do have any daughter really, but a daughter who is a little bit shyer and more meek, I think this story could be really good for her. Okay, but my absolute favorite book, you can tell how often I read this book. I might have read this 25 times, and that is something that I've kind of been reflecting on as I was like thinking about this video, is that when I was a kid, I would just reread these books over and over again. And I do like as an adult that I'm reading a lot of different books, but there is a lot of value in rereading. And sometimes I get really caught up in the infinite amount of books that I've never read. But yeah, rereading books, then you understand them better, of course, you remember them better, you learn more lessons, I feel like, each time you read them. So maybe even once a month, I will try to focus on rereading a book. But let me know, are you someone who does reread a lot, or do you just kinda always go for a new one? But let me tell you guys, this might be my favorite book from when I was a kid. I can't really think of one that I could put above this. All these books I would highly recommend, of course, but I read this one so many times. It says, at her birth, Ella Afrel was the unfortunate recipient of a foolish fairy's gift, the gift of obedience. Ella must obey any order given to her, whether it's hopping on one foot for a day and a half or chopping off her own head. But strong-willed Ella does not tamely accept her fate. Against a bold backdrop of princes, ogres, giants, wicked stepsisters, and fairy godmothers, Ella goes on a quest to break the curse once and for all. This is another one that they did make into a movie, and this movie did a lot better than like The Thief Lord and even Inkheart. So you might have seen that movie with Anne Hathaway. It probably came out like in the early 2000s. That movie, <laughs> while it is good in its own way, they changed the story so much. And it's kind of odd because like the other ones, like Encart, like The Thief Lord, they almost like dumbed down the story and made it a lot more silly when the real story actually is kind of dark. Like it says she would have to chop off her own head 
if someone ordered her to. So the movie is cute, but the book I think is so, so much better. Another book from the same author that I read a lot is Dave at Night. And as I said, Gail Carson Levine, I think is a great author for like middle school girls. But in this book, the main character is a boy. So maybe a young boy in your life would prefer this. Of course, both genders can read whatever they want, but just in general, you know, I think the princess books are more geared towards girls. And in this book, the main character, Dave, is in an orphanage, his father dies, and he escapes at night, as the title suggests, and he kind of finds a whole other world. I think it's set... Okay, it's set in Harlem. So he's finding a whole other world in Harlem of jazz musicians, like really cool people, people that he was never exposed to in the orphanage, of course. So this is a really good one as well. I didn't connect to it quite as much just because the main character is a boy, but it was one, you know, that I'm sure I did read probably 10 times. Okay, now we have another series that I'm super eager to reread, and maybe I'll just do a video where I like binge read the entire series, and that is The Lightning Thief. And I'm not even sure that these are all the books. There might even be more books in the series than this. But The Lightning Thief is a fantastic series. Again, they made it a movie. I do think the movie was pretty solid. Like, I think they did a good job with the story. But just a fantastic hero adventure story. Great cast of characters. I remember it was great pacing. This is one that I do think that if you're an adult and you miss this series when you were a kid or you just never got around to it and you think, oh, it's a kid series, whatever, I would recommend reading it. I think it's super good. And it's a bit more lighthearted than something like The Hunger Games. And this author, Rick Riordan, he does have at least a couple other like long-standing series. So I do want to look into reading some of those as well. Another one of my absolute favorite authors for series is Cinda Williams Chima, maybe, or Chima. I only have one book on me right now. This is the Warrior Air series, and I think there's five or six in them. And this is one, I don't think I ever actually did finish the series. I think I read like the first five and then, you know, I went to high school or college or whatever, and I just didn't get around to reading them as much. But this story is so well written. It is set in the real world, but it's kind of like Harry Potter where a lot of people are just normal people, but then other people have certain abilities. And it's actually like a stone in your heart that gives you a certain ability. So some people are warriors, some are sorcerers, all kinds of different things. And each book in the story focuses on a different person and they all know each other. So everybody's in the different stories, but each book is focusing on a different person with a different ability. So I would highly, highly recommend if you like Harry Potter, if you like some fantasy, there are battles and things like that. People die, not everything is super happy, happy, but 100%, 100%, one of my favorite series and one of my favorite authors. This is another one that I only have one book by the author on me right now, but this chick, she has unfortunately passed away. Such a fantastic author and you can see how much I read this particular book. The author I'm talking about, I think how you say her name is Eva Ibbotson, and this is The Secret of Platform 13. It says, under Platform 13 is one of London's busiest train stations in an old doorway covered with peeling posters. And that might sound familiar to you with Harry Potter. And I think I saw an interview with this author where someone said, do you feel like JK Rowling like copied you? And she was like, I don't care. Even if she did, I do not care. But it says, behind it is the entrance to a magical kingdom, an island where humans live happily with mermaids, ogres, and mysterious creatures called mist makers. When a beastly woman named Mrs. Trottle kidnaps the island's young prince, it's up to a strange band of rescuers to find him, save him, and return him to the king and queen. But can the rescuers, an ogre, a hag, a wizard, and a fae, Troop around London unnoticed. And what if the prince doesn't want to go back? So as you can see, a lot of the books that I really liked when I was younger and still like now are kind of like split between set in reality, but of course have fantastical elements to it. I'm not a massive fan of like high fantasy, but I do like that little bit of split. Another book that I love by that author is Witch Witch. I actually read that more, but I'm not quite sure what happened to my copy of it. Journey to the River Sea is also an excellent one. Island of the Ants. And also The Star of Kazan was another one that I did read from her. And there are still other ones too that she wrote that I never read. So I am really excited to read everything that she's ever written at some point. But I do have to save my absolute favorite author of all time for last. 
and that is the one and only Roald Dahl. You've heard of him. He is truly the world's most scrumdiddlyumptious storyteller. So many of his books were extremely successful, made into movies, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda, James and the Giant Peach, Fantastic Mr. Fox. I mean, it goes on and on and on. The dude could just write such amazing stories. And I don't think I've ever read another author who was more creative and innovative than Roald Dahl. All of his stories were just so unique and absolutely did not copy anybody else. And I've read a lot about Roald Dahl because I just love him so much. I've read some of his biographies, but I read that he actually dreamed a lot of these stories and he would be sitting in his chair and he would be holding a pencil and he would take a nap to kind of get some rest and also come up with some story ideas. And when he would drop the pencil, when he had fallen into that deep of sleep, he would wake up. He didn't actually want to be sleeping for that long. So very interesting person. He had a lot of different jobs. He was in the military. He wrote a lot of different kind of stories. Of course, we know most of his children's stories, but he did write some very scandalous adult short stories as well, as well as stories based on his own life. So there's so much out there by him. I would highly recommend picking up anything by Roald Dahl. But as a kid, I read everything that he wrote, all of his kids' stories. This was one that I got a lot of use out of, the wonderful story of Henry Sugar and Six More. And I actually just saw, I haven't watched them all yet, but Netflix worked with Wes Anderson and Benedict Cumberbatch and I think a couple other like very high up actors. There are short films on Netflix from all of these stories. So I'd highly recommend that. I think the only one I have watched so far is The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar, and it was really, really well done. Then of course we've got Matilda, Iconic, James and the Giant Peach, Amazing, The Witches, one of my personal favorites. I haven't loved any of the movie adaptations of The Witches so far. Definitely not bad, but just not my favorite movies, but I do absolutely, absolutely love this book. And then so many more, but these are just the ones that I have on me right now. But all right, you guys, those are some of my most read books from when I was a kid, right about that like 10 to 13 age, I would say is when I really, really was reading these books a ton. And do let me know, what were some of your favorite books from when you were a kid? As I said, I do want to be reading more middle grade in the future because they do just stick with you. They're so heartwarming a lot of the times. But if you like this video, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe. It really does help my channel out a lot. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.